my sweet, sweet IGCSE babies. You can do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can get an A star or an A for IGCSE or GCSE mathematics. And this is just how I did it. This is what helped me attain it um, but it is completely possible and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So IGCSE or GCSE it's not like A level so you don't have to start like 10 months before you actually write your exams. Um, you can, that would actually really help you but you do have to start eventually so I would recommend starting three to four months before your exams start prepping for the math. Don't base your ability to do math on school. So like for example tests, if you do poorly in school um, that's not a reflection of your capabilities to do math. That's not a reflection of how you will do at the end of the year, let me tell you. I failed every single math test <laughs> in IGCSE and I still got an A star for um, the external exams and that is because teachers tend to make the tests much more difficult than the actual end year exam or mid year exam or final exam whenever you're writing and that is because they want to prepare you um, so that when you do get to the exam, you're gonna be like, what the fuck, this is actually so easy. Yeah, so that's kind of like teachers trying to help us, even though it, it doesn't seem like it, it is actually teachers trying to help us. So don't base your ability to do math um, on how you're doing at school. If you're struggling, do not be scared to ask for help. This is a huge one. Ask your teachers. If you don't like your teacher and your teacher is shit, ask a classmate, ask your friends, you know, help each other out. Um, use resources like Save My Exams, Z Notes. There's a bunch of different resources. I did speak about resources. If you want to see all the resources, then just go to um, the How to Survive A Level video on my channel. At the end, I speak about all the resources you can use for IGCSE and for A-Level um, and what is free, what is not free and basically what you should use for math because there are different resource platforms that are better for math compared to others. When you start studying for math, I want you to slowly start doing past papers, okay? Because past paper training is crucial, guys. It is crucial. If you walk into that exam without doing a past paper, you're not gonna do well. You're not gonna get an A star. I don't think, like it's literally impossible. Past paper training is so, so important. So what I want you to do, right? Hear me out. Four months before your exam, start doing a past paper every single week. Just one, okay? And switch between um, paper two and paper four if you're doing the extended program and paper one and paper three if you're writing math core. Then three months before the exam, do two past papers a week. So do paper two and paper four or paper one and paper three in one week. Two months before your exams, <laughs> we're just narrowing it down, but two months before your exams, start doing, just keep on going with two past papers a week, but this time, do it under time, right? I can't remember how long you, you guys have. I think it's two hours, 15 minutes for the one, and two hours, I don't know but you have to go check how long your paper will be at the end of the year. Then for paper two, you're gonna time yourself, okay? You're gonna do a little alarm thingy and you're gonna write that paper without using notes so that you can kind of get the exam feel so that when you get to the exam, you will, you won't, there won't be so much pressure in regards to time because I know time can be a huge issue. Well, it was for me at least. So I think that that really helped me. 
Okay, once you've started doing past papers, you will more or less be able to see where you struggle, whether it's differentiation, um, transformations, I, like stats, can't remember all the topics that we do in IGCSE or GCSE, but you will be able to see where you struggle the most. And what I want you to do, right, I want you to write down, like on a little piece of paper or a notes book, write down what are the topics that you're struggling with when you're busy with these past papers. Then you're gonna go to pastpaper.co and you are going to do past paper questions. Not past papers, past paper questions. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, so this is pastpapersco.co. Um, and it's completely free, that's what I love about it. It does have ads, but whatever, because it's free. <laughs> um, so you're just gonna go onto it, choose what you're gonna do. Um, there are many different variants of math. I know um, I did math 0580. So I'm just gonna show you how it looks like for math 0850. So you're gonna go to topical past papers right and then it's going to give you all the topics and stuff um it's going to give you it has the mark schemes and everything for it i'm just going to go into coordinate geometry to show you more or less what it looks like um but it has questions it has resources it has past papers and as you can see the questions are from past papers themselves overall if you're doing the extended course for IGCSE, so in other words, if you're writing paper two and paper four, I suggest focusing just a bit more on paper four. And this is because paper four is more application compared to paper two, whereas like paper two is more like theory based and the knowledge that you have acquired, whereas paper four is a bit more application. So I know a lot of people tend to struggle a bit more with paper four. That's why the threshold for paper four is typically lower compared to paper two. So if you do really well in paper four um, and then do well in paper two, then you'll definitely get an A star or an A. Speaking of the threshold, my sweet IGCSE babies, you cannot rely on the threshold. I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. I, I think this is your first external exam and let me tell you that you cannot rely on the threshold. That will be your downfall. Do not do it. Do not do it, okay? Even in A-level, you can't rely on the threshold. You can't predict the threshold um, using previous data because you don't know what the test is going to be. You don't know how people are going to find the test. So do not rely on the threshold. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and... Good luck, you can do this, study hard, and let me know how it goes. Bye!